Hi. Uh, well, this is Exponential Day, the day for the function that only calculus could create, y is e to the x. And it couldn't have come from algebra because however we approach e to the x, uh, there's some limiting step. Something goes to zero, something goes to infinity. I've got different ways to reach e to the x, but all of them involve that limiting process, which we haven't discussed in full. Let me come back at a later time to the whole theory, discussion of limits, uh, and just go forward here with this highly important function. And I'd like to start with its most important property, which is, so it has this remarkable property that its slope is equal to itself. That's, uh, that's what is special about e to the x. Its slope is equal to, the, the slope is equal to the function. Now, uh, I have to admit that if we had a function like that, y equal e to the x, then 2 e to the x would work just as well, or 10 e to the x. Those would, the factor 2 or the factor 10 would be in y and it would also be in the slope and it would cancel and this is a differential equation, our first differential equation. A differential equation is one, is an equation that involves, as this one does, the function and the slope. It connects them and that's the fantastic description of nature is by differential equations. So it's great to see this one early and it's the most important one. When you get this one, you've got a whole lot of others solved. Okay, but I, I needed to give it a starting point so that the solution would be e to the x and not 10 e to the x. So where shall I start it? Well, if I want it to be an e to the x, then when x is zero, e to the zero power, some number to the zero power, is always one. So let me start this, y equals one at x equals zero. Differential equations, you have to tell where they begin. So that's, that's our starting point. And, and do you see what this means? This means that it starts, it starts at one and what's its slope at the starting point? The slope is also one, so it's climbing. As it climbs, so y gets larger because it's got a positive slope. As y gets larger, the slope gets larger, so it climbs faster. And then it's gone higher, y is bigger, the slope is equal, so the slope is also bigger, so it climbs even faster. It just takes off. It goes, it, it climbs much faster than x to the one hundredth power. You, you might take x, y equal x to the one hundredth. That's climbing pretty well. Two to the one hundredth, ten to the one hundredth, but no way, it doesn't come close to keeping up uh, uh, with y equal e to the x. Okay, I have to, I've, I've got several things to do and, and one more thing I have to do. This is a key property but there's another key property that is true for any 2 to the x, 3 to the x, e to the x and that key property is also to show, I have to show this, that my function e to the x times e to the possibly a different x, is equal to, do you know what we want here? This has got to come out of the construction, out of this property. It's got to come, but it, we want this to deserve to be called some number to the x power. If we take some number x times and multiply it by some num that same number capital X times, then we've got that number how many times? 
X plus capital X. This is what, so that's a key property to be proved. So what do I, what will I do? Let me summarize in advance, outline in advance. I'm going to uh, construct this function from its property. Then I'm going to check that it's got this property, the, the, that important equality there. Then, of course, I'll graph it, I'll figure out what E is, and I'll say something about uh, cases where this comes up. Oh, I could even say something right away about wh where does this happen that growth is, pro is, is equal or proportional to the function itself. Uh, it happens with interest, with money in a bank. When you get interest, the interest is proportional, of course, to the amount there. And if they add that interest in, if you don't take it out and spend it, but you compound it, put it in there, then you have more money. When they compute the interest again, it's computed on that larger amount and is, is more interest than the first time. And so it goes. So that's, money in a bank is a case, I mean, it's a case of exponential growth. I mean, a hedge fund goes faster than our bank account does, but all following E to the X. If you just hang on long enough, you're way up there. Okay, so here's my job. Follow this, follow this rule and start at Y equal one. So can I just do it this way? Here's my function Y of X that I want to construct. I want to build that function and I know that it starts at one, but it's going to do some, have some more things. Now this has to equal dy dx. These are the, have to be the same. That's my, that's my rule. So dy dx is going to start with a one. But now I can't stop because if the derivative is a one, I better put, I have to put an x up here so that its derivative will be one, right? Its slope will be one. That's that steadily climbing x whose slope is one. But now these are supposed to be equal again. So I have to put this x also here. But now I've got to add something more on the top so that the slope will be one plus x. The slope of the x was one. What do I need here to give the slope to be x? Remember x squared had the slope two x, so I need half of x squared so that I'll have one x. So I need a half of x squared. Good. The slope of that is this but I'm also trying to get the two to be equal. So I better, I, I have no choice, I have to put in the one-half x squared there. You see, I'm never going to catch up or only for, uh, if I go forever. I, that's the point, I'll have to go forever. And what will the next one be? Oh yeah, if you see the next one, then we can see the pattern. So it's going to be, I, now what am I doing? This one has to have this slope. I'm trying to get, fix, I'm fixing the top line now. If I'm aiming for a slope of x squared, then I need some number of x cubes. So how many x cubes do I need? Well, I need to know, I need to know what's the slope of x cubed? The rule for powers of x, x to the n, is n times one smaller power. The slope of x cubed is three times x squared. So I had better divide by that three so that the three cancels the three. Now the, now the slope of that, the three x squared, the threes would cancel and I get x squared, but I'm looking for one half x squared. I need also a two. 
Do you see that it's one sixth of x cubed that's going to do the job? One sixth of x cubed. Because the slope, the three cancels the three, and I wanted to end up with a two. And now, you know what's coming? These are supposed to be equal. I have to have this one six x cubed down here too. And I never get to stop. Can you see, we have to see, okay, what is a typical after I've done this, say, n times? I'd like to have some idea of what is it when I get up to x to some nth power, then it's multiplied by some fraction and I'm looking to see what is that fraction. What is that fraction? And then, of course, it'll, they'll all show up down there again. Well, if you see this pattern, this was three, this was three times two. You could say three times two times one. This one was two times one. This one was just one. It's n factorial. n factorial is what I need. I need n times n minus one. I need all these numbers all the way and I'll throw in the one at the end. That, and I have to put the mathematician's take it away symbol, the little three dots that mean don't stop, keep going. But do you see that this will be okay? This is called n factorial, x to the nth over n factorial. Because when I take the slope of x to the nth, an n will come down, cancel that n. x, I'll have it one lower power. Do you see when I take the slope of this, I'll have the n will cancel the n. So I'll still have these other guys down below and I'll have x to the n minus one and that will be x to the n minus one over n minus one factorial, that will be the previous one. But now I have to add in the x to the nth over n factorial because top, because y and dy dx have to be the same, so I have to keep going. Okay, so you might say, well, you're going to blow up, not personally, the series, but what saves you, what saves you is the fact that these n factorials, those fractions, that n factorial gets to be really large, really fast, faster than this x to the nth could grow. So altogether, these terms, x to the nth over n factorial, they get extremely, extremely small. And then this series of things comes, no, oh, it, it comes to a limit. It doesn't keep going, getting bigger and bigger and bigger as I add more terms because what I'm adding is so small, so small. And that's the point where we have to discuss limits later. Okay. So that's my, that's my construction. Construction complete. The function y to the, uh, y of the exponential function, e to the x, this is e to the x, is being defined by one plus x plus a half x squared plus a six x cubed and so on. Okay. I've got a function. Now it's property. And the key property is this one. Can I move to the next board? So the next step is check, well, I've asked you. Ha. I've got e to the x. And let me write again what it is. One plus x plus a half x squared plus one six x cubed and so on. And then I've got e to the, any other power or even the same power. One plus I'll just use capital X for this, for this power, one six of capital X cubed plus so on. And I want to multiply those and see what I get. Okay, I apologize. 
Here I ask you to believe in this infinite series. And, you know, a little dodgy, but it works. And now I ask you to multiply two of the things. You may say, okay, you're asking a lot here, but go, just hang on. Let's multiply these. E to the X times E to the capital X, because that's what I'm interested in knowing. Okay, can you just do all the multiplications? So, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so one times one is one, no problem. One times x is the x. One times this x is the big x. Now, can I keep going? All right, well, one times a half x squared is and now I have a x times a big x. And now I have a 1 times a half big x squared. And, and more, of course. Notice all, the way I'm doing it is uh, like I'm keeping the, all, the t all the things that have two x's together. And then I would keep all the things that have three x's together and so on. Now, what is it that I'm hoping? I'm hoping that this is, that this is the same as the series for X plus capital X. Okay, what's that? That's my exponential series and every time I have to put in X plus capital X. In other words, of course it starts with one, and then it has the X plus capital X, and then it has the one-half of x plus capital X squared, and it keeps going. And I just want you to say yes. I guess I hope you say yes when I ask, is this big multiplication the same as this one? Well, I think it is. Let's just start the check anyway. The ones are good the x and the x, I, I'm really just putting parentheses around the, the, all the, now I'm going to put parentheses around all the second degree terms and say, is that the same as that? Yeah, th this is the critical point here. Do we at least start out correctly? So you have to remember how do you do, but you, of course you do remember how to multiply X plus capital X by itself. You just do the multiplications. X, when I multiply that by itself, I get X squared. With a, with a half, I get that. And then you, sh you remember, what do I, how many X times X's do I get? Little X times big X, there would be two of those. But then the one half factor leaves me with one and that's what I want. And then finally, this guy by himself squared is the one-half capital X squared that I also want. So far, so good. Do you want to see the cube terms? I, I, I don't, well, I'd rather you did it, but I should at least show that it's, I'm willing to try. So what do I mean by the cube terms? I mean that here I want to get the next one should be one-sixth of X plus X cubed. And from the multiplication, I get some separate pieces. I get one times, a, I get a sixth. When I do that multiplication, I get one-sixth X cubed. And then I maybe get some one-half x squared times x. Oh, you see why. I would rather you did this. But I'll finish this little line. There's also uh, a one-half, an x times one-half x squared. So that's a half of x times the big x squared. And then there is the one times the one-six x cubed. So those are the four pieces that come 
third degree when I do the big multiplication and they have to match the third degree term in the last line. And they do match. If we cube thing, do you remember the right words to say now? Binomial theorem. The binomial theorem tells you how to take the nth power of a sum, like x plus capital X, to the nth power. It tells you all the many pieces you get, and those many pieces are exactly the pieces that we get directly by one, by multiplying that line by that line. So the binomial theorem at long last pays off and confirms our great property here. So this is a big deal. Okay. So let me now come back here, having checked that. This, I, I wanted to say something about this series. 1 plus x plus a half x squared where the typical term is x to the nth over n factorial. This is the, uh, I would say the second most important infinite series in mathematics, the exponential series. And it's the way I wanted to construct e to the x by matching term by term and seeing that these n factorials show up. Uh, you might want to know what's the most important series. Reasonable question. For me, the most important series would be the one looking like this except it doesn't have the fractions. For me, the most important series would be the one, I'll slip it up here, one plus x plus x squared without the half, plus x cubed without the one-sixth, plus so on, plus x to the n without this n factorial that's making it so small. Can you see this? One plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the n? That, I think it's called the geometric series, powers of x. Now, it's simpler because it doesn't have these fractions, but it's riskier because those fractions were making the exponential series succeed. Whereas here, with the geometric series, well, look what happens when x is 1. When x is 1, we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 forever, all 1's, it blows up. And when x is bigger than 1, that series blows up even faster. So it, this series, the geometric series, this most important one, does succeed, but only for x, only when x is below 1. x equal 1 is the cutoff and it fails after that. There is no cutoff for the exponential series because of these dividing by these big, bigger and bigger numbers. This works for all x. Okay, so those are the two series. Okay. Now, what happens, so let me ask you, what happens if I put x equal 1 in the exponential series? That gives me e to the first power, which is e. So finally, you may say, that's rather late in the day, I'm going to figure out what E is from this series. Put in set x equal 1 and you learn that E to the first power, which is E, is, can I just put it in, 1 plus x is 1 plus 1 half of 1 squared plus 1 sixth of 1 cubed. What's the next term in this? So these are numbers now, and I'm getting a number. I'm getting this incredible number E, named after Euler. Euler was a fantastic mathematician. I think he wrote more important papers than any 
mathematician in history. So he was allowed to name this number after himself. E. E-U-L-E-R, his name is spelled. Okay, what's the next term? This is three factorial, right? Three times two times one. The next term will be four factorial. I'll multiply that by four. It'll be a twenty-fourth, and then times five, a hundred and twentieth, and so on. They're, they're getting small. What can I, what can, what can I tell you about this number? It, it, it will be a definite number. It, it's, and it's more than, well, it's certainly more than two and a half because I start with two and a half here and then I, I add these. Well, I could even throw in one six. It's more than two and two thirds, would that be? If I quit here, I'd have two and two thirds and then I get a little more. It's easy to show. You no way you would reach as far as three. These later terms are dropping too fast. And actually, the number turns out to be, so it's two point something, two point, let's see, a little more than two and two thirds, so it's, a, it's around 2.7. And, but it's, it's not exactly 2.7. In fact, it's not exactly any fraction or any finite decimal. It goes on and on, one, eight, two, eight. Something. I think there are like more eights than you'd expect right here at the beginning, but then in the long run, not. In the long run, yeah. So that's the number E. Okay. Oh, so now we know E. We know E to the X. We know E. We know this thing. I, I should draw a graph, right? That's the other thing you do with a function is draw a graph. Okay. So here's a graph. This is x. Let me put in x equals zero here and x equal one here. And, and this is going to be a graph of e to the x. And at x equals zero, what, what is it? That was, we started with that. It should be, so this is y. I'm graphing y. And it starts at one. That's what we said. At x equals zero, I've started at one with a slope of one. So I, I have a slope of one, but the slope, a slope, a slope is climbing up, and it reaches here. That height is what? E. That height is E. So because when we said x equal one here, we got E. So it's climbing, 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 and now what about on the other side? That had a slope of one, so it was more, more like that. Now, what about when x is negative? Ha! Huh. When x is negative, this is a highly useful fact. Suppose, well, I, I want to think about e to the minus x. Well, now let me just take capital X to be minus little x. So I get e to the x times e to the minus x. What, what is that? What does that equal? If I multiply e to the x times e to the minus x, as usual, I'm supposed to add these. I get zero, so I get e to the zero, which is one. In other words, e to the minus x is one over e to the x, which we fully expected. So that at x equal minus one here, I'm down to one over e, one, one third approximately. So it's going down. This is in this way, it's decaying very fast. It almost touches that line, but never quite. This way, it's climbing. It's growing. Growing really. Well, it's growing exponentially. And that's what its graph looks like. And now I would like to connect back at the end of this lecture to the insurance business, to the, sorry, the interest business, the, the bank compounding interest. Can I take your time with that important example of the exponential function? And we'll see a new way to reach E. 
I like this way. I like the way we did it with the infinite series. But here's another way. So, suppose, suppose you're getting 100% interest. Generous bank. Okay. So then, and you start with one dollar. At 100% now. It's the 100%. And the bank gives you interest at the end of every year. So at the end of the first year, you had one dollar in the bank. It adds in 100%. It adds in another dollar. So now you've got two dollars in the bank after the first year. At the end of the second year, it gives you 100% of what you've got in the bank. So it gives you two more. It gives you four. At the end of the th third year, it gives you an additional four. You're up to eight, to eight. And you see what's happening. It's the powers of two. Well, that's pretty good growth. But it's not calculus. Calculus doesn't do things in steps of a year. Calculus says cut that step down. I mean, you would want to ask your bank, couldn't you just like figure the interest a little more often and put it in there, like figure it every month? So what would happen if you figured the interest every month? Of course, you wouldn't get 100% interest in a month. You'd get 100% divided by 12 because you've only, we're only talking about one month. So if, we, if it was months, you start with one. You have one plus one twelfth. That's what you'd have after a month. Now, what would you have after two months and what would you have after 12 months? Well, we're going to follow the rule. This is what you, this is what, they gave you the one twelfth at the end of January. So through all of February, you've got one plus one twelfth in there. At the end of February, they take, they take one twelfth of that, add it in. What you get the next time is one plus one twelfth squared. That's what you have when they, essentially every time they're going to multiply what you've got by this number one plus a twelfth. One to give you, leave the money in. You have to leave your money in, I'm sorry. Plus a twelfth of it for the interest. And then twice. And after one year, it's done this. Do you see what happens? After one year, it's multiplied twelve times. One plus one twelfth to the twelfth power. And that's better than two, right? You got the two only when they put the interest in just once a year. Now we're speeding up the bank and getting more out of it. So I don't know exactly what one plus one twelfth to the twelfth power is, but I know it's more than two. And actually, I'm sure it's not more than three. In fact, yeah, I'm claiming that it's not as much as E, 2.7. So, but it was worth doing to get them to compound every month. But of course, you think, okay, I'm onto a good thing. Every day, why not? So what would every day be? One plus one, 365th. That's the interest you would get for just that day, but then they would compound it 365 times. So that would be a little more than this because they're adding the interest in more, more frequently. And in general, I'm going to divide the year up into n pieces. In every piece, they multiply my wealth by one plus one over n and they do it n times in a year. And the beautiful thing is that as n goes to infinity and calculus comes in because we're asking them to compound interest continuously, not just every month, not every 
day, but er, not every second even, but all the time. It do, you don't get an infinite amount out of this. You get E. That approaches, as N gets bigger, that approaches this number E. That's another way to construct E as the limit. You see this is going, this is like, as N gets bigger, it's like one to the infinity, which is kind of meaningless. I don't want to say that one to the, I had an email the other day that said, well, one to the infinity is E. What's, what's happening? Well, that's not true. It's this, this thing that's going to one, this thing that's going to infinity, then the combination goes to E. Okay. So that's the application that shows the number E appearing again. Okay, can I, th that's, you, you've got the essence of e to the x. I just would like to say one thing coming back to the very beginning here, the great differential equation dy dx equal y. That was beautiful, which we've now solved. Now, I want to ask, what if the differential equation was dy dx is some multiple of y. How would that come up? Well, up to now C was 1. We were getting 100 percent interest per year. But now if C is sort of the interest rate, the growth rate, or the decay rate if C is negative. We may be losing money in this bank. So, can I just tell you what is the solution to this differential equation? When I tell you and we learn about taking derivatives, you'll see, of course, that's all it is. It's just the solution to this one also, I'll also start at 1. The solution to that one is y of x is e, e is coming in again, to the cx. What what I'm doing is like changing the rate at, I, I've, cha I've made the rate of change C and then that C is going to come up there and in the derivative, the, the slope of this guy, that C will come down. The slope of this will be C e to the Cx, which is Cy, which is what that second differential equation tells us. So that's just a, a comment looking ahead that we've solved not only the most important differential equation with the most important function that calculus creates, but a whole collection of related equations in which the rate can be any fixed number, C. Okay, thank you. This has been a production of MIT OpenCourseWare and Gilbert Strang. Funding for this video was provided by the Lord Foundation. To help OCW continue to provide free and open access to MIT courses, please make a donation at ocw.mit.edu slash donate.